Hi, I'm Lee. I'm the FPNA Technology Director at Revelwood, and today I'm going to show you how to create a cube using built in planning analytics functionality. So, the cube that we're going to create, we're going to purposely keep it as a very simple cube, and we'll create a sales cube. So, the concept of the sales cube is simply going to be looking at how much have I sold by time, and we'll calculate out two components. We'll be able to take a look at our sales numbers, and we'll also be able to calculate out a commission value. So the first component of creating any cube is to create the dimensions associated with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a cube with three dimensions. The three dimensions are going to be associated with the time, associated with the sales reps, and associated with the measures. We're going to use three different methodologies to build these dimensions, and we're going to do it directly out of planning analytics. So the first dimension that we're going to build is we're going to build a time dimension. And the way that we're going to build a time dimension is we're going to use a wizard. Time is pretty standard. Assuming that you're on a calendar year, assuming that you have basic roll-ups where months roll into quarters, which roll into years, Planning Analytics has built-in wizard functionality so that all I have to do is define my structure and define my time period, let it do the rest. So the way that we're going to do that is to create a new dimension. I'm going to click on the dimension component. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose the option that says create dimension. Well, this is where the first part of the wizard comes up. And the very first thing it's going to ask me is, what's the name of the dimension? We're creating a demonstration today. I'm a big fan of putting prefixes in something. So I'm going to prefix everything with the word demo. So since this is our time dimension, I'm going to call the dimension demo time. Then I'm going to click on create. Well, as soon as we've created the first dimension, our wizard pops up and it asks, what kind of a dimension are we going to do? So since this is a time dimension, I'm going to choose the option that says customize this time. And when I click on Customize as Time, I get a different pop-up. The pop-up really asks me for three things. What's my starting time period and my ending time period? We'll just put a couple of years in there. 2019 to start, 2020 to end. And the way I'm going to make my selections is by clicking on the triangle, clicking on the drop-down, and selecting an element. Then I'm going to figure out my hierarchy structure. Do I want this to be something where I do it by months, I only show the quarters, I only show the years? For purposes of this, we're going to go down to a monthly basis, and I'm going to say month. As I make the selections on the wizard, over to the right, it gives me a preview of what the dimension is going to look like. So I can take a look at what is 2019 going to look like by clicking on the plus, doing my normal expansion, just like I would be doing inside a uh, view, and I would see that I've got months, which roll into quarters, which roll into the year. The way I create the dimension, simply click on create. And by filling in that wizard, you can see that the system built the dimension for me and it created the hierarchy structure. But what it also did is it also created a series of attributes. So there are built-in attributes associated with the wizard. And you can see that it set up things so that I can do references. What are the first and last period of a quarter? That way I can do analyses where I'm taking a look at uh, comparative values. I can look at previous periods and next periods in case I want to do some kind of a rolling or some kind of a trailing approach. I can have descriptions and aliases and short names and long names that I can manually populate. But the system is going to build all of this based on the wizard. So just by click, right-clicking on dimension and choosing the wizard gave me my first dimension. So just for real estate purposes, I'm going to close up the window so that we don't have all the dimensions open at the same time. And now I'm going to create the second dimension. So for the second dimension, I want a list of all my sales reps. So I'm going to follow the exact same approach. I'm going to right-click on dimension. I'm going to click on create dimension. And I'm going to give it the name. I want to keep my prefix uniform, and I'm just going to call this sales rep. For this particular situation, I don't want to use a wizard. What I want to do is I want to instead use a file. So I have a file that I've pre-created with all of my sales reps, and this is going to give me roll-up structures. It's going to give me all of my individual sales reps. It's going to roll them up into regions. It's going to create an alias all built into it. The way that I'm going to use this is I'm simply going to click on this file, and I'm going to drag it. And when I drag it, I'm going to drag and drop right on top of that same window where it opened before. And when I let go, it's going to bring me to another wizard. This wizard is going to allow me to simply click on buttons to build the dimension for me. The first set of buttons, how do I want this to be import? Do I want a list of my base level elements, leaf only? Or do I want to create some kind of a structure, parent-child? I'm going to choose parent-child. How many header rows? What's my delimitation? In this particular case, I've got one header row. I've got it set up for comma delimited, but you can see there's a series of components where I can uh, define my, um, the, the delimiter. 
Now all I'm going to do is define each one of my columns. My very first column, I had a header called region, and I'm going to define that because I chose parent-child. I'm going to define it as either the parent or the child. I'm going to say parent. My second column was my child. Now for the third component, this is where I want to create an alias. I want to use planning analytics functionality so that I can have an alias or an AKA. I'm going to set this up as a brand new attribute. For purposes of this new attribute, I'm just going to call it full name. And I'm going to set it up as an alias, and I create it. The system, as part of the wizard, will create that alias for me. And then the overall wizard, once I click on import, will populate it. So when I click on import, what it did is it created the hierarchy structure, just like we saw in time. It also created all the attributes. So you could see that the various people, the element name, in this particular case, the sales rep, was first name. The full name is going to be defined as the alias, and you can see that the wizard populated all of that for me. The third dimension that we're going to build is we're purposely going to manually build this one. I don't have a file, I don't have any kind of a wizard. I want to create two components. I want to create an, uh, a measures dimension where I'm going to store my sales, I'm going to store my commission. So in this particular case, I'm once again going to right click, create dimension. I'm going to call this demo sales measure. And in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to manually enter the new members. So I'm going to click on enter new members, and all I do is start typing. I'm going to create one member that I'm going to call sales. I'm going to create one member that I'm going to call commission. And once I'm done, once I've created my entire list, I click on commit. I can also define the formatting. So I can now right click on this and I can make the determination of how do I want the numbers to be formatted. There's a series of wizard components built in. I'm just going to use a basic comma where I want to have comma with two decimals. And what the system did is it created the elements and I could have created a hierarchy. I could have created structures just like I had before. But in this particular case, it's two elements just like before. It's got attributes. In this particular case, the attribute was the formatting. So what we just saw is we just saw that there are three different mechanisms that we can use to build a dimension. One mechanism is a wizard, where it'll create the time dimension for me. One mechanism is drag and drop, where I can use some kind of a structured text file and pull it in and let a wizard work. And one approach is to manually pop in numbers. I can type numbers, I can type elements, I can type values, I can create attributes and set it up however I want. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how do we take these three dimensions, put them all together, and build a cube. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this one, or you can check out our website at revelwood.com.